Hello, and welcome to my video using PepsiCo's 2019 annual report to illustrate the classified balance sheet and select ratios that one can calculate with the classified balance sheet. In chapter two of your book, you learn that classified balance sheet has certain sections. First, the balance sheet is a snapshot at a point in time showing the assets or resources of a firm and how they're financed, either with liabilities owed to creditors or by the owners as equity. To improve understanding, companies group similar types of assets and similar types of liabilities together. For assets, there are current assets that are expected to convert to cash or be used up within one year or one operating cycle, whichever is longer. There are long-term investments in stocks and bonds of other companies, including influential investments and affiliates that, that, that are not quite controlled. There's property, plant, and equipment, which are physical assets used in the business. And there's intangible assets when a firm buys a patent, a trademark, a copyright, or when a firm acquires another company and pays a premium above the fair market value of its net assets, which is called goodwill. For current liabilities, those are due within a year or an operating cycle, and the longer term liabilities are paid over a longer period of time. For equity, there's the two most important categories are contributed capital, when investors give money to when initial shares are when shares are initially common shares are initially issued, or when new shares are issued, and also retained earnings earnings reinvested in the business over time and not paid out, paid out to dividends. Let's review these elements in PepsiCo's 2019 annual report. First, looking at the balance sheet, we have our assets. Total assets at the end of 2019 were 78.5 billion. Current assets, those expected to convert to cash or be used up, are 17.6 billion. They're listed in the order of liquidity or ease of conversion to cash. Of course, cash is already cash, so it's first. Short-term investments can be easily sold and converted to cash. Accounts receivable, the largest current asset of 7.8 billion, are collected from customers and then converted to cash. Inventories, we have 3.3 billion. And then we have some prepaid expenses like prepaid insurance that's gonna be used up within a year. The property plant and equipment is 19.3 billion. If you wanna know what types of property plant and equipment, how much is property, how much is plant, how much is equipment, you can look within the footnotes. For intangible assets, there are those that are amortizable, meaning they have a limited life and you will write them off over time. That's 1.4 billion. And those with an indefinite life, goodwill being the largest one, when you acquire another company at a premium. The total of the intangible assets is 30.1 billion. We also have an investment in a non-controlled affiliate. And we own an influential percentage of the stock, uh, not enough to control them. This is an illustration of a long-term investment. For liabilities, we have our current liabilities of 20.5 billion. We have accounts payable at being the biggest part of it and other current liabilities. We have long-term liabilities, mostly long-term debt obligations, uh, you know, the bare interest, 29.1 billion, and total amount is 63.7 billion. Total equity of PepsiCo is 14.8 billion, we have some contributed capital and the largest part is earnings reinvested in the business or also known as retained earnings. Notice the sum of total liabilities and equity is 78.5 billion, the same as total assets on the prior page. This is as by design as you will learn when you learn to record transactions in the accounting system in chapter three. Liquidity ratios measure the short-term ability of a company to pay maturing obligations and meet unexpected needs for cash. The current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. Classified balance sheet makes this easier to calculate. In 2019, 
PepsiCo had current assets of $17.6 billion and current liabilities of $20.5 billion. Another way to say this is that it has a current ratio of $0.86 cents in current assets per dollar of current liabilities. In 2018, it had $21.9 billion in current assets, $22.1 billion in current liabilities, or $0.99 cents of current asset per dollar of current liabilities. Because it had more current assets per dollar of current liability in 2018, PepsiCo was more liquid. You might wonder, how can PepsiCo, it's a big company, it makes money, it's profitable, how come they don't have as many current assets? Well, PepsiCo has good credit and the ability to issue commercial paper if it has short-term credit needs, they have lines of credit with banks, so they might not want to invest in having too much cash on hand since they can easily borrow it when needed. One thing I thought you might find interesting is I also have this ratio in 2017 and 2016. And you'll notice that PepsiCo actually had a much higher current ratio. It had 1.5 1 to 1 in 2017 and 1.28 in 2016. So for every dollar of current liabilities, PepsiCo had $1.51 in 2017. Therefore, it was more liquid in 2017 than 2016. Another ratio is this type of ratio is the solvency ratio. The second ratio we calculate, which is debt to total assets, is total dollars of liabilities per dollar of total asset. What percentage of assets are financed by creditors? Again, the classified balance sheet makes this easier to calculate. Of total assets of 78.5 billion, 63.7 billion, is are financed by creditors. 81 cents of every dollar of asset is financed by creditors in 2019. In 2018, we have $63 billion in total liabilities and $77.6 billion in assets, 81.19 cents. So the 2019 debt to total asset ratio shows you that, guess what? PepsiCo was very slightly less solvent in fiscal 2019 than it was in fiscal 2018. It's slightly less solvent, but basically equivalent. They still use a decent amount of other people's money to finance their assets. Please feel free to use this presentation as a review before calculating your current ratio and debt to total assets for your chosen company for the discussion. I will also place a copy of the PowerPoint slides in Moodle. Good luck and get started, Jaspers.